Greetings Metalheads and welcome to another issue of Friday 13th Metal YouTube channel. Today you're about to listen to an audio interview with KK Downing, former Judas Priest. This was done in 2001 on the uh, Demolition Tour at the Manchester Apollo in England. So enjoy. It was a great interview, pleasure interviewing KK. A real nice guy. So if you're watching this, Ken, stay met. Let's do another interview. It's been such a long time. So yeah, folks, please enjoy. Please share on social media, WhatsApp. Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Please give a thumbs up and spread the word. Be safe and stay metal. Thing it was either going to be a one hit or one miss wonder, you know, with the Jungulator album. But uh, I think, uh, obviously, having having him now, obviously firmly on on two records, I think this will put a, a lot of minds to uh, to rest in one way or another. Right. Okay. Our next question is: I think it was either going to be a one hit or one miss wonder, you know with the Joan Gillater album, but uh, I think uh, obviously having, having him now obviously firmly on, on two records, I think this will put a, a lot of minds to, uh, to rest in one way or another. Right, okay, next question is, um, so how successful was the Joan Gillater album for the band, and what did the press say about the album? Um, I guess it was kind of uh, predominantly it was it was good, you know. Uh, obviously, a couple of people said that they didn't think there was enough guitar playing on there, and you know stuff like that. But nobody really knocked it as such because obviously, as far as a heavy metal album goes, it's pretty tough, you know. It's a pretty uh, tough album, and um, I would have to say that uh, the success of it depended on, like, you know which territory we were talking about I mean the album did exceptionally well in a lot of places off the top of my head like uh, obviously uh, Japan, Spain, Germany you know uh, obviously a lot of the European countries um, America was a bit disappointed but then again we were with a small company for the first time you know CMM on it CMC That's it, yeah. um, we've since parted ways with those and, and decided to better off to be a a small or medium fish in a in a big pond, you know, than the other way around. Yeah. Because um, obviously the big companies have got a lot of clout, you know, and they are willing to put some decent cash behind the the all important promotion and um, you know the promotional aspect of that is so essential really to a band sort of a band's success. Yeah. Good. Okay. My next question is: Was the tour for Jugulator a success? Well, it was for us because I mean, obviously we were we were like let out, you know, and it was we were to be back on the road again after seven years. I mean, I can honestly say, you know, we we enjoyed every show, and it was especially great to be on stage with Rippy, you know, because he's such a great singer and sings so in tune and he's so reliable. Um, it was excellent. Um, again, we played anything from like thousand seat sort of venues, you know, House of Blues, to uh, to um, some quite massive gigs, you know, uh, in different parts uh -huh. of the world. Right. Okay. My next quest, part of this question is: You only did two dates on the UK tour. Mm. When I interviewed Ian and the Ripper, they said you were going to do more dates for this in England. Why didn't you do more than just the two dates? Well, it's just the promoters, really, I guess, you know, um, w in actual fact, I mean, for, for example, we played Glasgow last night, somebody told us it was 1988, was the last time we played in Glasgow, well, when you think about it, it's a long time, isn't it, kind of around 13 years, mm -hmm. the band hasn't played a, a city, or even Scotland itself, and, uh, and, and obviously with a new singer and um, but obviously we are playing more gigs this time and that's the all important thing right. and so obviously next time we want to uh, play even more but it's all down to the promoters 
and let's face it the uh, the heavy metal fans that, co that came last night and the metal fans that will come tonight they're all dedicated you know um, followers you know of, 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 of rock and metal and they've always been there and they always will be but I would have to say that most of most of most of us now like in the UK feel like we're a bit of a m minority and more so as the years go by really right uh, because obviously the UK itself is such a we know sort of like trend setting country and that's why the punk and new wave thing kicked was kickstarted out of here, you know, and lots of other things. But now England's only too ready to accept every trend that crops up anywhere in the world, whether yeah. it's grunge, whether it's Seattle sound, whether it's fucking Marilyn Manson, whether it's fucking oh, whoever, sucks dick, it? <laughs> whoever it is, you know, Limp Bizkit, whoever it is, they're ready to go, yeah, that's new, we'll have that, you know, we'll like that and we'll play that and we'll promote that and we'll present that. And because obviously, it's taking, uh, obviously, the more styles of music and stuff like that you've got seemingly to be popular, especially the the younger fans, yeah. the more that they're going to be led astray. They're going to laugh when they say Judas Priest, because I sound like Judas Priest when they say, well, them. It's like, yeah, hello, no. the band that started it, yeah. hello. Yeah. Tap on the head like. <laughs> yeah. Needless to say, I mean, we just came, we just did three shows, the first three shows in Europe, Switzerland, Austria, and Milan, and there were festivals, metal festivals. I mean, the last one in Austria, it was three days of non-stop, <laughs> dawn till dusk, total metal, you know. I mean, I got to Dynamo and Wack and so on, yeah. Yeah, so, um, but, like, it's, 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 it's less than healthy, obviously, in the UK, um, for obvious reasons, you know, um, it's the way that the, the media and the industry is in the UK. They're always looking for something fucking new off the blocks instead. And but the other territories, you know, they always adhere to themselves to to the bands that they grew up with and are new to and grew to love. You know. Right. Okay. Next question is: um, So, what did you think of the support band on that tour, the Gorefest? How did you get on? Yeah, with uh, yeah, we got on with the guys great. But again, it was a conflict of of, of musical opinions, wasn't it? Really. And um, unfortunately, again, the promoters and people, lots of people recognize they seem to think it's a good idea to have two bands that play different styles of music to bring two different audiences in and get them, let them be, think, oh, yeah, this is pretty cool. And, and I've got to be perfectly honest, just because Juice Priest has been around for 30 years and obviously we're older blokes now, mm -hmm. you know, um, they they tend to forget that when we were out there performing, we performed just just like the, 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 uh, the we did, you know, like in the seventies. There's no difference, you know. Yeah. We're not hobbling around on <laughs> fucking crutches or anything. <laughs> and I think that a lot of them tend to think, oh yeah, for a new young band with them, you know, sort of whatever to to, to lift, bring yeah. to bring the young kids in. Well, not necessarily to uplift us, but just to bring the. Um, <clears throat> they think that they need to do that. I think to bring the. Uh, the youngsters in well or, or whatever their train of thought is but the only thing is that bothers me is the fact that i don't have fans coming to pay for a ticket and they think the, the support bands is just they just don't like that style of music yeah. i think that's what sucks that's why this tour is great i mean for example uh this uk tour the promoters wanted to put cathedral with judas priest yeah, you know yeah. and um and I mean, I'm not au fait with the band, but off the top of my head, you know, I think that Sabotage is probably a closer knit match Definitely. for the Judas Priest fans. Yeah. You know, um, not to take anything away from Cathedral or any of those bands, but had it been like a three act bill, mm -hmm. let's say, or, you know, four, then I think you could spread it about a bit more, put somebody on this a little bit different as a contrast. Yeah. But really, when people go out and pay good money for a ticket, they want to still... I mean, and I'm exactly the same. I mean, when uh, UFO came around last time with Uli Roth, opening up, you know, I'm just not thinking, fucking hell, I've got to go to that show. And of course, they cancelled before they got to Wolverhampton. Killed right. But obviously, it was a double, double whammy for me, liking both bands. Right. So you're going to get off your ass and go. Yeah, it should have been Overkill supporting you on that tour. A lot yeah. of people wanted to see you with Overkill. 
Yeah, Not they were going to they were going to support in the states, and but the singer had a problem with something. Yeah, he's a personal friend of mine. Glad ass. <laughs> I remember Chris from Savard, um Golfest saying to, saying to me once that there was calling uh, Scott Mr Happy on the tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if that's right or not, but okay. Next question is: um, Are you happy with the European label as well as Japanese label? Um, we've actually changed the Japanese label from Jugulator now to JVC. Right. And uh, so it remains to be seen how uh, how well they perform. But obviously, true to Japanese tradition, we can we can we can only say that you know they're so they're fastidious and studious about what they do. You know the Japanese that we we've, we've got every confidence that they'll do a hell of a good job for Judas Priest. SPV, I'd have to say. Um, they're covering a, a, a lot of territories, aren't they, as a record company? Oh, yeah. And I think it's, uh, even though there might be a couple of small minor grubs, the UK distribution, a few things here and there, uh, on the whole, when you actually go to Europe, it seems that, like, if, it, if you're not with SPV, who the hell are you going to be with, you know? Um, but the main thing is they were very receptive to the band. Uh, when we were looking, they actually came to us, they wanted the band. And they're not skin flints either. You know, I mean, they um, they take good care of us and good care of the uh, promotion when whenever we ask for something, and um, <clears throat> hopefully, um, and we haven't had anybody really making any major complaints. So we think they're doing a, a damn good job. So you're still doing it, Priest Music Limited? Is it still? Yeah, we still have Priest Music just to you know safeguard you know everything really, but. Um, but uh, obviously, uh, it's only really by uh, by name and contract, you know. All right, then, Kemet's question is: um, So, why? How did the deal with Atlantic Records come about? Not exactly sure, really. I think that obviously C CMC kind of folded up, as kind of we suspected that they would. Right. And uh, obviously, our manager has a lot of contacts. Uh, with a lot of record companies. What bill is it? Uh, bill Kerbishley, yeah. he's got obviously uh, Plant and Page with uh, Atlantic and stuff, so it was only for the asking really, asking about what was happening, you know, and, yeah. uh, and, uh, and they were very enthusiastic about it and um, we'll have to see what happens with those guys. Right, okay, have you been offered any deals with any other European labels since SPV recently? Well, I think it's kind of the ethical thing to do, not to try and poach anybody, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, otherwise, word gets back, and uh, you, <laughs> I guess they could all play that game if they wanted to. Right, okay. Okay, my next question is, uh, did you ever think that the band would go back on a worldwide major label deal, like with Atlantic? Um, at the time of signing with the smaller labels, n no, you know, but, um, but obviously... It wasn't too long before we thought, well, hang on, if we think this is a mistake, we could do it with the machinery of a, of a big label behind us, you know. OK, my next question is, was any of the material for Demolition wrote on, on the tour for Jugulate, any bits and parts, like most bands usually do, like little melodies and... No, I don't think it was. No? No, it was all new stuff. Right, so you didn't do any like melodies or anything whilst you were doing the juggler at all, you didn't come up with any ideas and think, right, we'll use them for the next album? No, I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. Okay, next question is, uh, how long did it take to get the ideas for the new album? Did you rehearse a lot? Mm, not so much. It, it took quite a long time. Um, I guess lots of things happen as you get older, you know, people have got a lot of responsibilities, liabilities and... You know, with families and friends and stuff, lots of things happen and absorb a lot of time. Uh, but again, just trying to put a lot of hard thought into what we were going to do and, and what everybody really wants as a whole, because it's so difficult to please everybody, as you can imagine. Yeah, right, OK. So was the ideas wrote in the studio, like your studio? Tech? Yeah, same know. thing, you know, I mean, um, self and the other guys just kind of put ideas down separately right. and then just get together and kind of knock them about a bit, you know. So how does Scott do it then with being a drummer? Well... Does he get the ideas? Well, uh, we did, uh, we booked some, a uh, couple of days rehearsals in the studio when, uh, I don't know if we flew Scott over purposely for that, uh, 
you know, to uh, that songwriting exercise, or whether we fitted in a, around the schedule. But uh, we uh, we booked a studio down south and uh, knocked a lot of ideas about. Right, okay, let's talk about the new album then. So, uh, why did you call the album Demolition? And did you have any other titles for the round for this record? Well, yeah, we had a. Um, we were kicking, obviously, as you do, you kick it around a, a bunch of words and titles, and you think to yourself, well, you know, has everything been done and, you know, and done and redone? And and it was kind of, uh, when somebody kind of suggested it, we thought, well, yeah, it's kind of obvious, but not obvious, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I guess we were just trying to... Uh, Just come up with something that was kind of, is it, I think it's fair to say, kind of mainstream in a way. You know that yeah. would uh, everybody could relate. Every heavy metal, every metal fan could think, "Oh yeah, demolition to you know all that." <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know that sounds like metal. But even like fans that are not yet into metal, or fans that are probably thinking about, you know, yeah. it, it's not something that's gonna. Uh, scare them away, you know, uh, or they're not going to think, oh, that sounds old fashioned, you know, that's Dungeons and Dragons or whatever. So right. I think that's pretty much, after a lot of squabbling, we settled on that one, really, as you do. Right, so did the artwork for the album? Sorry? Who did the artwork? Did you have any other. No, the same same guy did the artwork. Was it the guy who did the um, Juggler album? Juggler, yeah. Right, so what, did you, what is the cover? Is it the same as a single? Is it similar? It is, yeah. Right. Again, I think the train of thought was people people say a lot of things, you know, and sometimes they can make some pretty cutting comments, you know, oh, not another demon, and Julian, you guys grown out of that yet, type of thing. And you think to yourself, fucking hell, you know, what's going on? You, you know, and well, you know damn well our fans l l love that type of imagery and stuff. I mean, so it's so classical, really, but um, again, I suppose it's a bit of a bit of playing safe, really. Mm. So does the album reflect with the, uh, the title reflect with the band's music, this album? Does it? Reflect the name, does it reflect with the music, demolition for the well, album? I think it pr pretty well does, really. I mean, it's, it's, again, it's pretty uh, pretty heavy album. People say it's a heavy album. Um, but we tend to think that it's it's got, like, a lot of things going for it, really. Plenty, more light and shade than the last one. And it's probably a bit more... A bit more like, you could draw comparisons to stuff that, with each song that we've done in the past, you know. Right, okay, our next question is, um, so who wrote the songs for this album? Was it Glenn and Ripper or was it the old band that wrote the lyrics on the songs? Or? Uh, well, again, I think, uh, you know, Glenn was responsible for uh, the majority of the lyrics. Obviously, me and him worked on the uh, some of the musical things, but we also did a couple of... Uh, Chris, we hooked up with Chris Tangredes and he also oh, yeah, yeah. put a couple of good ideas in as well because you know he was, uh, uh, you know, firstly responsible for like the Twitch of Evil idea. Yeah. You know, because obviously he worked with us on Sad Wings of Destiny and he's worked with about every guitar player you could ever think of. Tags so of Pam Tang and stuff. Aren't yeah, it? well, you know, Gary Moore he's just done that. Uh, he, he does Invas. He's doing uh, Anger, isn't he? That band from Brazil. Yeah. Then you he does a lot of stuff, so he picks up a lot of good chops, you know. And he's, uh, uh, and, you know, he's a real enthusiastic guitar player. Okay, I can't, uh, Ken. The next question is, uh, how do you see these songs on, the, on this album as a progression? Um, I the, think that there's... the last one. I would have to say, I think that probably overall... Probably a little bit more 2001 sounding. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? No, what do you mean by that? Well, as opposed to, well, I mean, I think you can, like, distinctively, if you listen to records, you know, if, if somebody played you a Judas Priest record, you know, even if you wasn't a fan, yeah. I'd say, you probably have to say, oh, hang on, that sounds like about 70s, some, sometime in the 70s, you yeah. know, that's probably sometime in the 80s you know that could be like 90s there about mm -hmm. um and the same i think like for judas priest i think it sounds um you know it's probably 
more moving along with the technological sort of like help that you can get you know yeah right. i mean with the recording process i mean every time you go to a studio the state of the art gear has moved up at several notches you know i mean you get to to use like uh whereas like the the last album was done on adap machines now they're like so yeah antiquated yeah. you don't funny so now you move on to radar and it's the same with all the equipment they use in the studio mm -hmm. and so obviously you are moving along and obviously it sounds a lot different to sin after sin for that reason right okay so uh the album was recorded with sean sean lynch uh where was it recorded this album was it recorded in the same studio as juggler mm, some some of the stuff was done down there the drums and stuff and uh that black, black most, forest in the background and yeah, yeah most <laughs> most of the stuff was done at uh, glenn's got a new studio in a, a separate building in his house all oh, right okay yeah. so how long did it take to record this album and are you happy with the end results um took a long time um but i'd have to say that and we always say an album's never finished you know because uh, inevitably there's always things you can keep adding and improving and, and doing you know right um but we'll we'll just have to see um what the end result is um obviously glenn wanted to play a bigger role in this album so i guess a lot of it will be on his shoulders because uh, he wanted to have a crack at producing an album so he did this is the first time he's done an album is it um i guess so i don't know how much of a part he played in his uh in his solo album yeah but uh he wanted to do that he said he wanted to do so so come on, well. let me ha have a let me have a, a go at it but obviously a lot of time and a lot of money and uh, obviously a, a lot of talent and um we pretty much all know what we what we're supposed to do and, you know and uh we've been in a lot of studios over the years so but I actually did a lot of my stuff uh, at home with my own gear. Because it's in Birmingham, is it? Well, yeah, Bridge North in Shropshire. It's not too far from Wolverhampton. All oh, right. Yeah. Excellent. So I've got all kind of computerised, so I'm using Cubase and recording. I've done that. I was, I was studying music at college. We had to do Cubase. It's a yeah. fucking nightmare oh, to yeah. use. Yeah. Acid's better. Yeah. That's the program, isn't it? Did you do one. music technology then? Yeah, I did it at college about two years ago, got a diploma in it. Did you? Yeah. So you're yeah. pretty good on the Cubase then? Not bad. Not bad. Well, if you want me to come onto your house and show us how I get old though. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good. Obviously, I've had some serious, pretty serious tuition, so I'm pretty good. Yeah. I'll have to call you. Oh, if I get stuck, I'll call you up. Yeah, I'll right. give you my phone number, man. Or, vo or vice versa. <laughs> Alright, no, you left it. Next question is... It's tough to find people that can actually, you know, use Cubase anywhere. It's a lot of it's cutting and pasting, isn't it? Just moving things around. Well... Where you want them and... Yeah. Panning well, them and stuff. Yeah. The hell of a, it's a massive program, as you know. It's right. massive. Okay, next question briefly. Could you tell me what the songs are, are about on the album? Like, Man, Machine Man, I mean, that's a single, isn't it? Why did you choose that as a single? Well, the record company did. Are you happy that they chose that? Because I thought that Metal Messiah would have been a better song to introduce the album or Bloodsuckers. Well, I think Metal Messiah and Bloodsucker are probably my two favourite metal tracks on there myself. Yeah, me too. But One on One's a killer track as well. Yeah. I think that's good. We play that live and that'd be good. And uh, obviously Machine Man's pretty pacey, but I think, uh, yeah, I think those two songs... I think we'll, uh, well, I'm just saying to, we're talking about what what should we play, you know, when the album comes out. Mm. And I just went back home a couple of days ago and I had a good listen to the album because we've actually played Machine Man and One on One live on stage. Right. Um, I think we're just playing One on One tonight because of the time thing and whatever, you know, it's like, what do you miss out of a Judas Priest set? So, uh, but I just came back and I said, three tracks. Uh, blood sucking metal messiah and uh one of the ballads i think that we should have a crack at live what of the new album lost yeah. and found that's one of them isn't it yeah 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 this album's very different for jules place when i first heard it last week it was 
I was expecting something like a jugular. Yeah. But it's stepped back in a way, but it's gone different as well at the same time. It's kind of like... We always move, we always move the goalposts on our fans. We always change a bit, down. It? It's not the easiest album to get into this, no. by far. It's going to take me a few listens. Yeah. And I think any Jewish Priest fan is going to have to listen to it more than once. Right. But it is a good album, but it's very different. I mean, Machine Man, I thought, could have been a better song for the single, no disrespect. I thought, like I say, Metal Messiah. Yeah. To get the fans, like, whoa. Yeah, it's just the... Um... Didn't you ever say in the single one? Well, no, I mean, because we put it out there, and obviously a record company, they, I assume that they make phone calls, they talk amongst themselves with different territories, because all the territories are different. And they came up with... Uh, with... Uh, Machine Man, I don't know, I don't know what, but well, like, America, Atlantic, we're talking about Feed On Me, so, I mean, I don't know, it's all different territories. I'd have thought it'd have been different for them, wouldn't it, with yeah. all, the, all the stuff that goes in America, all screwed up country, innit? Yeah, <laughs> it is really. <laughs> right then, are you hoping to release a promo video for this album, and if so, which song, will it be the single? Do you know, we haven't even fucking talked about that, you've been so busy doing stuff, you know, at one point I said, look, we've got to make a video, you know, um... And it's something that we should talk about again. Uh, tomorrow's, I'll have to make a mental note as soon as see Jane and everybody to uh, say what we're going to do, even if it's like a, a live thing, yeah, mixed up with some like tour action or something. Yeah, that'd be good. Be cool, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, it'd be different to see a home be video. Cheap to do as well. <laughs> <laughs> the money you've got as well. Come <laughs> on, fucking hell. <laughs> so, what's your favourite songs on the album then? Uh, I think. Bloodsucker and Metal Messiah, I think. What's your least favourite? Mine, probably Subterfuge. Why's that? Because I think it's more... It's more of a groove than it is a song. Right. And yeah. it takes... It's, it's just different, do you know what I mean? I yeah. don't think we've ever met, ever done a groove. Song. Have you actually been influenced by all this, like, industrial music of recent? Because it's got an industrial vibe, this album, hasn't it? We've been just like Fear Factory or something like that. Has that got a f No, I definitely haven't. Right. I just wonder with it having that industrial sound in the background and the mechanical sort of industrial sound if you're influenced by all these sort of up and coming bands. No, I think it's it. just probably a more of a modern day. I mean, if, like you remember Metal Gods when you got the tray of cutlery and you're making sort of like sounds like that. I think yeah. now it's just kind of gadgets and you just pull up a few sounds, but. Anyway, that's like a production thing anyway, isn't it, you know? Right, so what do you think of the tribute albums that have been done so far, like Century Media and Dwell Records? Well, I think, you know, any tribute albums, you know, is you, um, as, as, as a band member, you think, well, you, you've got to be highly honoured, you know, if I thought, like, if I thought all those years ago I'd end up on an album myself, I'd have been happy, let alone bands making fucking tributes, you know, and yeah. you've got to be happy about it, really. Just got hold of a really weird one now. Is it the one that I sent Jane? The industrial album? Yeah. It's me that sent it to her. Fucking bizarre. Well, I've got that <laughs> at my house now. And the bands, they're not industrial bands, are I they? Think, I think it's an insult. I don't know what you think of it, Ian. I oh, think <laughs> it is an insult. I'm thinking... Because I rang Jane and I told her about it and she said, will you buy it and I'll send you the money. So I bought it and sent it to her. Yeah. I reviewed it, I give it zero <laughs> out of five. I said, this is the biggest insult to metal ever. And the bands are like, um, what are they like, like what those fucking... Fasty pussycat and all glam oh, shit. It's fucking madness. So on, man, get some money off the record company. <laughs> How can anybody think that's just a good idea to do that and put it out there? It's, I mean, well, I've sold fun. one copy. Have you? No, they have. All right. To the band. you bought yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then, next question is, um, what do you think of Rob Solo CD? The last one that he did? Yeah, Resurrection. I thought it was uh, a much better attempt than any previous one, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think it was right. more, on light, more on course with uh, where he should be. Right, OK. Um, are you happy with the um, talking terms with Rob? And what about the rumours of him joining? Is it still pissing you off? Or? Well, yeah, I don't know. I, I think um, Rob's obviously got an entourage of fans that really want him... Okay, no problem. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Where was I? I was on about Rob, these, uh, the rumours of him coming back and all this bullshit. It must be really pissing the band off. Yeah, a lot of people are going to start those rumours and probably because that's probably what they inevitably want, you know. And, Sad uh, people, basically. Well, well, yes and no. I mean, right. you can, you 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 got to kind of un, have an understanding when you know people have been following the band for you know over twenty years and they bought. They bought the tickets to the shows and bought the T-shirts and the hats and all the records and and then you know so the goalposts have moved on them you know somebody leaves and that and uh, they want to see you know reunited but it's only because the fact that um, people are so there are going to be people that they're going to be so reluctant to accept change you know that's yeah. that's kind of in, that's kind of a, a human nature thing when you think about it. I mean, I often quote when, like, when Hendrix, you know, ditched Noel Redding and Mitch Mitchell. I was devastated. He was going to play with two black guys I'd never heard of. I just, I didn't want that. I thought, fuck, you know, this is what the, the, the coolness is. Yeah, right. The black guy and the two white guys, and he's fucking, <coughs> you know, I didn't like that. But obviously, because I was, at, you know, he was able to do, you know, to do that really, and I think um, I was a big fan anyway, you know, so. I mean, if you'd have, if you'd have shit turnips or whatever, he'd have been, he'd have been still my hero, you know. Yeah, what about him? What do you think about all these rumours? Does it make him unwary, a bit nervous, thinking that he could be kicked out of the band at any time? Does it worry Well, no, I don't think so, because I think Tim's obviously inevitably felt the, the comfort, you know, from within the band and the assurance and security and whatever, and, and he knows how damn well good he is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, right. next question is, um, so how, how far, how well is the tour going for you so far, this new tour, how's the tour going? Yeah, well, it's 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 going great, you know, I mean, so the, I've had a zipping around here and there, so it's pretty, uh, pretty exhausting, but um, it's, it's, and it's a bit of a test, you know, fly here, play for that long, fly there, play for that long, you know, and and uh, every stage is different, so for obviously you have to call on your your, ex your expertise and your experience and just get on with it and do it. All right, okay, next question is, uh, could you tell me briefly about this DVD video, British Steel? What is it actually coming out? What is it? Is it the history, some sort of history of Ripper, or, or is that something that div else the film? It's the uh, British Steel. Yeah, it's the British Steel thing, isn't it? it was going to be on That's right, you know, classic albums. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're doing it. Right. But we're also at the moment in, well, they were there last night, the film crew, they'll be there tomorrow as well. Or we're also doing behind the music, the VH1 thing. Yeah, I heard about what Jen told me that he was doing something about it. Yeah, yeah it's just, I'm just curious to know what it is, this DVD thing, British Steel. I wonder yeah. if it was the film. And there's a film about Ripper, isn't they? It's coming out with some stupid. Oh, yeah. I... Is it Ripper? Because they reckon it isn't, but. Well, no, they reckon it isn't. They reckon it was to start with, but now they reckon it isn't. Well, I suppose when we told them that, well, obviously, if they were going to portray us, you know, then obviously we needed to be involved. And if we were involved, we'd probably. We'd probably want pain. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. In all fairness. Yeah. Um, so they did a U-turn and thought, well, forget this. We'll change the story, and you know, and because the worst thing is obviously they don't want anybody like us phone saying, no, cut that piece out, cut that out, because it's a multi-million-dollar industry, big investment, isn't it? Oh know? yeah, definitely. Okay. So next question is before we finish. Um, why has CBS decided to uh, re-release all your albums with bonus tracks? Whose idea was it? Um. I'm not exactly sure how that came about, but suddenly we were aware that we hadn't remastered all of those albums, and I think they more or less um, came aware at more or less about the same time. I don't know whether Jay might have rang them and just said, well, what do you think about this? And Because obviously we've long since left them, they probably thought, nobody there thought anything more about it, you know, but obviously when it was mentioned, I thought it was a good idea. Right, so what do you think of the remasters? I've never it's heard good. them yet, I've never it's heard good. them. Do they actually sound different then? Well, obviously, they're, no, they don't sound any, any different, but obviously with today's technology, you can recut them, obviously they're louder. Yeah. More 
ballsy sounding, you know, and uh, but all the characters still there. So what about the bonus tracks? What's what yeah. was the idea was it to bring these in? There's a bunch of those. Everybody's for years have been saying, "Have you got any spare tracks?" And we've said no, but uh, we got so pressurised we started to have a look and rummage around through CDs <laughs> and all sorts of stuff, right? And and came up with what there is. All right. Okay then, Ken, I'd like to thank you for doing the interview. Do you have anything to say before we finish the readers and fans? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first and foremost, like, thanks for hanging on in there yet again. I know it was like three years or so since the last tour and that, but uh, we're looking forward to seeing everybody that can make it to the, the UK shows in particular. And I hope everybody... Before we finish the readers and fans? Yeah, absolutely. Um, First and foremost, like, thanks for hanging on in there yet again. I know it was like three years or so since the last tour and that, but uh, we're looking forward to seeing everybody that can make it to the, the UK shows in particular. And I hope everybody likes the new album, Demolition, and, um, and uh, let us know what you think. Right, but cheers. until you see us, keep rocking. Right, thanks a lot.